Thank you. Um, <clears throat> it's my first time talking at EMF camp. I, I am a lecturer, so I should be used to this, but you're the most uh, intimidating audience I have, you know, even more than my students. Uh, just very quickly, just to say something about myself. Um, I teach computer game development at the University of South Wales. No, it's not three years of playing Fortnite, although a lot of parents think it is. Um, I've got a PhD in artificial intelligence and games. It took me 11 years to get it, so it's a lot of hard slog. Uh, I'm a first generation university goer. No one in my family had been to university before, before my generation, from a very working class background. So I am constantly having imposter syndrome. I can't believe I'm actually working at a university. Um, uh, and I've got loads of interests, you know, which uh, basically transfers to, I love starting projects and very rarely finishing them. So I hope I'm in, in a sympathetic audience. So um, one of the things I noticed that when I'm lecturing, people always come in in the third slide or leave in the third slide. So I thought I'd just give you the chance if you wanted to realize you were in the wrong place to, to get the message from this. Um, which is that we need to preserve things that we don't think are going to go away. So many th technologies are here and then suddenly they're just gone and there's no mention of them, them anywhere. Um, it, Googling and searches are an absolutely essential life skill. I've spent 40, 30 odd years honing my skills at finding things and not giving up until I find them. Um, Archive.org is your friend. If you've never heard of it, it's absolutely fantastic at finding old websites and retrieving things for technologies, firmwares, updates, instructions, everything. Um, and, you know, talk to people and ask them for help because you'd be surprised at how often people will come and help you out. And I, I have a great debt of gratitude to uh, David Merrill, uh, Mika Scott, uh, Eric Niao, and a whole load of other people who've helped me with this journey of trying to resurrect um, the things I'm going to point out in a minute. So, what are Siftio cubes? Has anyone here heard of a Siftio cube? Couple of people, that's why you chose this talk, isn't it? Do you actually have any? Are they still running? Oh, a couple of, yeah, yes, well done to you. I'm, ho I'm hoping it's either because you got them really early and you kept all the software, or you've been to my website. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, so basically what they are, I'm gonna shift, if I may, to um, image, image, image there. Oh, here we are. Um, oh, no, hang on. Sorry, just going to pull up this. Hopefully this will show on screen. Okay, so this is the first generation. There's sort of four generations of Siftio cubes, if you've never heard of them. They're basically lovely little internet of things. I don't know if you can see that. Let me uh, just put that down and then kind of focus on it. These are, oh, other way up. I just realized I'm playing to the audience when actually I should be playing to, where are we, auto zoom, there we go. So the little internet of things, they're basically repurposed Bluetooth keyboard processors. Inside your lovely little wireless keyboard is a little processor that basically has Bluetooth to connect to a computer or a dongle, and they repurpose them to basically make them self-contained little computers with sensors, touch sensors, motion sensors, a little screen on them, and you can play games with them. Well, you could until the company were bought out by 3D Robotics. And then the website disappeared. And if you got them secondhand off the internet or you were very lucky to get hold of them in a charity shop or whatever, you then started up the software that you, if you could find it, and then it said, create an account on the non-existent website. So a lot of my talk is about how we can overcome that. So let's go back to our slide presentation. Okay. So that's what Siftio cubes are, and I said there were four generations. The very first generation uh, is shown, shown here, and I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit. Entered into a handful of tiny screens scattered this across the This is the, the very first prototype by David Merrill, who was working at MIT Media patterns, Lab at the shake, time, and he tilt, wanted to make intelligent them. tiles, together, tangible things that could be interacted with. This is about 2008. He did a TED talk in 2009 about this, and I saw that, and I thought, this is just amazing. This is never going to see the light of day. And then a few years later, I was watching a lovely YouTube video um, and they're called siftables at that point, by the way. So um, let's move to the next slide. 
where's my mouse, there we go. And this is him at this TED talk, I won't, I won't go into that now. Um, and I, I, I thought that was an amazing idea, but I didn't kind of see anything about that was gonna come of this. It's just one of many cool demos that you see. And then I found out that it actually had become a product called Siftio in 2011. So a couple of years after his TED talk. And um, unfortunately, I only found out about that in 2015. <laughs> So not only had there been two generations of the Siftio Cube, the version one that's here and the version two that's in the box, I'll show you in a minute, um, but the website had come and gone and didn't exist anymore. So all the software was gone as well. And I, I found out that, about this on uh, an extra credits video of interesting games you might not have played. And there it was, and I thought, I mean, that, that's the same thing I saw back in 2008, 2009. What? It's a product? And I started searching, and I obviously read it in various other places, and I started to get kind of a sinking feeling when I saw the, it's been made open sourced. Oh dear. And all the games that you used to be able to buy are now free on the website. Oh, oh this is really bad, isn't it? Because that's the kind of, the, those are the things that give you the message that it's um, probably a dead product. Anyway, I managed to get a couple of, in fact, this very set of, of, of the, uh, of the, the wonderful eBay, and I thought, you know, ah, oh, I, I, I can get hold of these things. I, I, you know, they'll work. They'll be brilliant. They'll be fantastic. And I get, and I sort of like managed to find the software, you know, looking around on the internet. And I thought, oh, here we go, fantastic. Now it's the Mac version I had. I have a Mac, and there's a reason why I talk about the Mac now, um, because I thought, oh, fantastic. Got my cubes. Got my software installed. Great. This is what I saw, and I clicked getting started, and it took me through a, a really nice um, a, 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 you know, set of install the cubes, put the dongle in the computer, and all this stuff. And then I, and then I, I, I thought, oh, and I, got, I, I didn't get this, which is what I should have got. I got this. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll create an account. And then, of course, it went to a dead website. And I clicked on the help. And fortunately for the Mac version of this software, it glitched. After I quit the help, it logged me into this view. And you can see at the top there, it says nobody at siftio.com. It had generated, there was someone in the code for the Mac version that generated a default set of IDs for a user. And that allowed me to then go through my Mac and search through a whole load of app data and, and eventually found that there was a folder that was created that had some stuff in it, and that's where it was storing this. So if you, you can say that you click on these two things and it will actually allow you to create a new game. Um, but, so that was my first thing. I managed to glitch it. And then I, I kind of went online. I, I went to the website for siftio.com and this is what we got. So long, thank you, we're still here. We're now a, a subsidiary of 3D Robotics. That was the website. So I went to archive.org as you do, and I kind of trawled back through. Is, is everyone here familiar with archive.org? Yeah, a couple of people are, a lot of people aren't. It's absolutely fantastic, and you can talk to me afterwards if you like, and I'll kind of take you through the wonderfulness that is archive.org. But I managed to start to piece together the location of software and so on, and I got hold of David Merrill, who, the guy in the TED talk in the MIT, and I said to him, hey, I've got these cubes, but they're no use to me. And he went, yeah, no, unfortunately, that company doesn't exist anymore, so sorry. I was like, oh, but surely, and I kind of posted everywhere, because it was open source, it's on GitHub, and I kind of posted there and said, look, we must be a way for us to kind of get this working again. And fortunately, Eric Lau sent me a, a, a dump of his regedit for his Windows install. And this isn't his data, um, it's data I kind of created. But I managed to be able to manually create a regedit for it on Windows. And then this token was the, was the big problem. Um, so <laughs> I just brute forced it. I kind of randomly generated tokens until one worked. <laughs> it took quite a long time, but I was lucky. And once I did that, and I could then compare it and hash it with Eric Liao's, and I kind of like worked out the, the way to, that they were generating these hash codes. What was weird is that I could do this without accessing the internet. Um, and the, the tokens are, as long as they're valid, they don't care. There's no tying to a username or anything like that. So once I'd got one, I was okay to, to use it. So that was actually quite reassuring. And also terrible security. 
And also, you may notice there, there's points. Points are the way in which you bought software on the, um, on the server. And I could generate any number of points I liked. So, yeah. Um, th that wasn't true for the second version, the version two of the cubes. That, that idea of points didn't exist anymore. And I put 666 in, because I, you know, you do these things, you think people are not always nice on the internet. I'm going to put some specific data in to these things so that if anyone comes back, I can prove that I was the one who generated this. And also, I'm the one that's responsible if anyone wants to come back. If somebody else has got this, and, and then they get into trouble, they can track it back to me and I'll go, yes, it was me. Um, I did get permission from David and the people at uh, siftio.com, as was, to upload all of the games that were available for both versions of the cube. So I have permission to do that, and I make it very clear, you're not allowed to just put these up anywhere you like. They are owned still, but I've been given permission to make them freely available, not open source. The games are still owned and proprietary. And this is what you get when you have all the software. There were about 25, 26 games that were released um, officially through siftio.com, uh, and these are the games that you get to see. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna have time to demonstrate them, but I'll, I'll, I'll very quickly, if I can, uh, do that in a minute. So, but this is what you get. You get, um, you get a kind of, this is the get started, the kind of tutorial app for running Siftio Cubes, and you plug it in, and you will see something like, something like, hang on a second, like this. So um, I'm, gonna try, I'm gonna just very quickly hit play on it. The thing is, these are effectively peripherals to the computer for the version one. They'll run on, they'll run the software on here, but it'll then use these as kind of intelligent peripherals. This tutorial has spoken instructions. So you Turn can hear, the sound on I'm gonna shift over to the camera. To make sure you can hear these instructions. Can you see, I don't know if you can see that. Congratulations. You've started playing with your Siftio cubes. Oh, because I picked it up, this it realized. This tutorial will show you some of the ways you can use your cubes to get the most out of your games. Most Siftio games will use all of your cubes, but this tutorial will only use three of them. If a cube does not have a smiley face on it, set it aside for the moment. Okay. You, when you buy Siftio it, Siftio cubes can you get three, and then you can add more to it. It was a lot of money. You can flip a cube so that the screen lies face down. Can you see it? Try flip. turning one of your cubes face down now. Okay. okay. Now flip it back up again so that you can see the screen. Good job. Okay. Now flip another cube over right, and I'm back. Gonna, I'm going to stop that now. Hang on a second. So it ran on the computer, okay, which, which is great, which is fine. Um, it was a little limited, obviously, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, but we managed, I managed to glitch it in to get it working, and then I managed to reverse engineer it, create a generic account for it, and, uh, and off we went. Um, so... I've done the live demo. <laughs> Okay, so then we came to generation two of the Siftio cubes. There's a lot of feedback from it. Very expensive, tied to the computer, not much fun. Uh, about a year after the first ones were released, they released a version two, which use, uses, these are, these are the newest ones, which I'll come back to in a second. It uses a standalone, oh telling you about it on here and not showing you, sorry. Okay, it uses a base station. So these things, that you can download software to this, it then runs on its own, it has a sound output on it. Pretty much the same thing with these. The, this is the Joy's Cube version, which up until fairly recently was the only way to get hold of them and, and sadly their website's starting to look a little bit suspect. It's uh, security, HTTPS has gone, so uh, yeah. Um, and uh, they've, pres they've stopped shipping them because of COVID and various other alarm bells are starting to ring. They reverse engineered the version two. This is it open if you want to have a look. By the way, never leave batteries inside things because the acid destroys them. This is version two of the official 50 O cubes. And uh, here is the official base station for it. 
So it's not that dissimilar. I think much better quality. But once it went open sourced and the company stopped producing them, it's, it's third party in China. They actually contacted me and said, do you have the specs for this? Do you have all the plans? And I was like, um, no, but I know that you can talk to these people. And then they went really quiet. And then suddenly there was these things on Kickstarter, which was quite interesting. And they'd ripped off my software. <laughs> which is what the 666 and the token and everything in. So I did contact them and I said, um, yeah, I took a lot of effort to reverse engineer this to get them working again. And you just shoved it up there as your software. So they very kindly sent me a set to say thank you for, uh, for all that work. And, um, and it all sort of ended happily in the end, but there's a few interesting backwards and forwards uh, messages from them. So, and, th and this is their, this is their, their Kickstarter video. What they have done is they added extra functionality to it. Each individual thing is a Bluetooth controller now, so it can be used with a PC as an input peripheral, as well as being a Siftio cube and is compatible with all the software. So if you do want to get hold of these things, this is the best way to do it. They're fairly new, they've got slightly more functionality, um, and you know, in that respect, I think they're, 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 it's good to support them so long as they actually do start shipping them again. Um, and. Uh, that's sort of it, unless you want to see some more demos. Uh, one of the things I, I was interested with, uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with, the, um, with the version one version of the cubes, I mentioned to, at the very beginning, we have this creativity kit. What's really nice about this was that um, it actually allowed you to create your own kits. So here is my, here is my um, hastily created uh, demo. Because it plays inside the computer, I'm going to pull up the. Can you see? Can you see this? Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, hang on. There we go. So I can I can select which game I want to play by putting them together. It's not working. Oh, is, is it working? No, it's not working. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the thing about live demos. One of the things that I haven't gone into... Oh, here we go. Oh, gosh. Look, we can... Hang on, is there a fourth cube here? Yeah, there we go. We can create our own data. So, gosh, there's a puzzle. How do we put these together? Hang on. Oh, gosh, I'm... Not... How do we put these together to make a well-known thing? This took me seconds of programming. So, EMF camp, in case you haven't got that. And then, oh, there's one that only needs three. So, talk to Mike. Oh, hello. Ready. Principal fellow of the, of the Power Education Academy. Okay. Um, so you can create your own you can create your own software very simply with these things, which was one of the really nice features of the first one, and it disappeared. Uh, so sorry, a second, let me go back to the presentation. It it disappeared for the version two. So this is the version two um, kind of software interface. It's a lot flashier, the version two software, and you can see all the games that were that were produced for it, including. Where was it just then? A game of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So remember, this has to download onto the base stations. Um, but once you've downloaded it, there's a limited amount. But once you've downloaded it, you play the games without using the computer because it produces the audio there. Um, and what's nice about this is it's much more polished. So you actually could get information about the games. And you can sort of install game. See details. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now this was actually one of the hardest things for me to do because I got the software, but a lot of the, a lot of the background data that is on the computer for these different uh, tutorials uh, was missing from the copy of the games I got. I don't know if it's corrupted for whatever reason. I had to kind of reproduce some of these and uh, I've got a blog page, on, uh, a post on my, uh, on my blog about this. I actually had to go into archive.org and look for all the sites that have reviewed the games to then capture the images, to then recreate them. 
Um, and, and all these kind of icons down the bottom here, there were several of those that were missing and I had to recreate. Um, I can see here, um, missing launcher icon. Um, and, and I had lots of gaps in this. This, this is not the kind of finished version you can see here. Um, this is what you get if you just downloaded the software from my site. There is another file you can then download that adds that back these extra uh, graphics, which some of which I had to recreate, some of which I managed to very fortunately steal off archive.org. As you know, if you know archive.org, not all images are recorded. A lot of the text is, but some of the images isn't. Um, so I've, I have managed to kind of complete the set now for this. Um, and that's, that's, so we've got Joyce Cube, so we've got the kind of fourth generation. The very first generation was a, a prototype that David Merrill created called Siftables, then Siftio version one, version two, and then the Joyce Cube, which you can still get. These are available on the internet. If you look on Amazon, you get them for sale for thousands of dollars. This, these are people who just shove that up you know, with that stupid price. They are not worth that. I get people saying to me, oh my God, I saw these for sale on Amazon for thousands of dollars. Do you want to buy them off me for several hundred? No, they're not worth that. You can get them for like 20, 30, 50 quid. Um, you don't have to spend thousands on them. The only thing I'll say is the original cube, I'm very lucky the original uh, version one cubes, which come in their own charger box, None of the batteries have gone, but I am getting reports from other people who are saying that the internal batteries are starting to go. So, touch wood, I never get that. But at some point, I'm probably going to get one of these things dying on me, and I'm going to have to do surgery and open it up and see if I can replace the battery. And obviously, when I do that, I'll post it on my blog, and then you can do the same thing. Version 2, use batteries. Don't leave a battery in. Bad idea, because the acid. And I... Oh, Always took the batteries out of them when I was putting them into storage and kept them separate, except one time, one I forgot, and that's the one that's dead. Uh, unfortunately, it just corroded through, and I will try and fix it at some point, but um, there you go. Um, so that's that. Let me just go back and sit, finish off the slides. So, um, uh, so as I said, that's one thing that is nice about the Joys Cube. They've got a, an updated firmware, they've got Bluetooth functionality, they've got an API, as long as the website stays there. I am making backups of all their software for when that site disappears, because I, I think it's going to, sadly. Um, unless people suddenly go out and buy loads of them, please do. Um, I don't get any money from it, but I did get thank you and a set for myself, so I think that's reward enough for me. Um, and you think, okay, well, what's next? Okay, this is my last slide, but what's next from all this? Because um, have you heard of Scrabble Dash? Scrabble Dash, again, you can pick it up really cheap on eBay now. It was Scrabble, the, the company owned Scrabble, I can't remember the name of them now. They looked at Siftio and said, we want to do it for really cheap. So not a couple of hundred dollars for a set or even more. 20, 30 quid. Scrabble Dash is almost exactly the same thing, monochrome, but it can still tell when it's put next to each other, and it produces letters. And you've got to rearrange the letters to make words. And every time you do, you make more points. You know, and we're all, a lot of us are actually playing the, its successor from the Scrabble Dash, or Boggle Dash, it's known in the United States, and it's called Wordle. You know, you're kind of trying to get five letter words, constructing them together. Uh, and just to finish off, because I know I've got like five minutes, there is, there is another kind of inheritor of these, and it's not a direct inheritor. Um, but have any of you heard of WOW Cubes? No one? Okay, oh, you'll like this. WOW Cubes. Okay, so WOW Cubes are a digital Rubik Cube. Every block has got three screens and then contacts in the back. It's touch sensitive uh, in that the whole thing, if you shake it, it will respond. It knows when it's connected to everything else. I found about, about this when it was a, a very early prototype that an 11 year old Russian boy had created using lots of parts and 3D printed bits because he'd done a review of Siftio cubes on his, on his dad's YouTube channel. And I, because I was looking for Siftio stuff and I found this and I was, that's amazing. And I reached out and said hello to them and chatted and I've been following them ever since. And now you can pre-order this for about $250, $300. It's $50 off at the moment. It's stupidly expensive. 
in some respects, but it's also unique, in my opinion. And they've got Cut the Rope and various Space Invaders and a whole load of other kind of like softwares that are available for it. Uh, if you do pre-order it and get your $50 off, do tell them I sent you that way. Um, just because I wanted, and he's obviously not 11 anymore because it's a few years ago, but I wanted him to succeed with something. He was a kid who saw these Siftio cubes and went, I know Siftio cubes plus Rubik's cubes win. And it's an amazing thing. They've got a number of videos on the YouTube site now um, uh, kind of showing you gameplay. And you can see in many respects, it is the, the successor to the idea of Siftio cubes. Really interesting kind of thing. Um, it's, it, it, the SDK is going to be made available for it. You could actually, if you look on their website, these things will just unplug from each other because they can attach magnetically. And they actually have an installation art made up of about 30 or 40 of these things on a back framework of them so they can just push them in. And it's just the most amazing thing ever. And it's really nice to see that even if Siftio cubes or Joy's cubes or other things kind of die, that there is a historical legacy and they move on to other things. But in the meantime, I've got my lovely sets, my three sets. It's my dream to own one of the original prototypes that David Merrill created from MIT Lab, but chances are that pretty slim, in my opinion. But I would also like to, again, thank David Merrill, because he sent me a set of the version twos uh, and other people who've given me donations on my website for hosting all this software that would have otherwise gone away. And I know you don't normally have questions, so I'm going to be stood outside. And if you want to have a play with these things, um, we can probably get a table set up or something. And I hope you've had a nice, uh, nice time and enjoy the rest of EMF camp. Thank you.